Welcome to Toffee TV. I am joined by Rob Sawyer, the author of, let's go through them, Harry Catterick, The Untold Story, T.G. Jones, The Prince of Centre Halves, and the upcoming Blue Dragon, the story of Roy Vernon, which I didn't realise was such a prolific centre forward for Everton. Oh, it's, it's amazing his stats. He's sixth highest goal scorer for Everton. In, in all time, he's one of I think only only a few have scored 100 goals or more in the league, better than one in two goal average, and he wasn't even a centre forward. He was a number ten, like the the inside forward yeah. in, in old money. So Alec Young was the centre forward, but so it's amazing stats that he had, so prolific, and not just a goal scorer. He could do everything. He could tap ins, 25 yarders, just just a great player. So he was involved in the early 60s at Everton. He came from Blackburn. That's right, so Johnny Carey, who was the Blackburn manager, took yeah. him there in the mid-50s. Everton missed out on him as a, as a teenager, not the first time, <laughs> and uh, made his name at, at Rovers. But uh, when Johnny Carey went over to Everton in 58, I think Roy got unsettled and he agitated for mm. a move. And in 1960, he, he moved across to Merseyside. I think uh, he was one of the very first of those John Moore's big money purchases that started to the suddenly Mersey, trundle in. The Mersey, Mersey millionaires. millionaires. Absolutely. Oh. So you had people like Jimmy Gabriel, Tommy Ring, Roy all arrived within a few weeks of each other um, in 1960 and then of course Alec Young a little bit later on that year. And he'd already played in the World Cup, hadn't he, the 58 World That's Cup That's right, Wales. he'd gone to Sweden in 58, played in one of the matches there, got to the quarter-finals, so he was already an established player, mm. one of the jewels in the crown at Rovers, you know, they didn't want to lose him, but he he made it difficult for them to keep him and even in the days before agents, Roy yeah. knew how to, to work <laughs> things, shall we say. So, why do you think then he isn't one of these names that, as Evertonians, just trips off the tongue? Because obviously you just mentioned Alec Young there, yeah. who for any Evertonian of any generation, they know who Alec Young is. Um, Joe Royal, obviously, who's still got connections with the club, then onto Bob Latchford, Andy Gray, Graham Sharp. Even like Duncan Ferguson, who hasn't got a, a goal-scoring record anywhere near Roy Vernon. Yeah. You know, but Evertonians know. I know he's, he's a little bit closer to home, so and he's still at the club. But what, what what do you think it is that's gone slightly missing that we do, we don't know Roy Vernon as much? It's a good question. I think it was his fortune, but also misfortune to play with Alec Young because Alec was this sort of photogenic yeah. icon, you know, the golden hair, the sort of beautiful way he played, uh, and that probably overshadowed Roy. But mm. they were equals, you know, they were they were greater than some of their parts. If you didn't have Roy yeah. and Alec together, we might not have won the league. So I think that was one misfortune. And he left after five years. If he stayed on a couple more years, maybe he'd have won the FA Cup. So maybe he just wasn't there quite long enough to yeah. uh, cement himself in, in, in our sort of long-term affections. And, and then afterwards, he kind of just moved away from football. So he didn't see him popping back to Goodison like Dave Hickson yeah. and, and Brian LeBone well, and people. Well, he played in America, didn't he? And South Africa? Yeah, when he was with Stoke, they, they had like this franchise. So that <laughs> Stoke went over and represented Cleveland. They called themselves <laughs> Cleveland Stokers. So it was like rent a team. So they did that for a, a summer. Stoke went everywhere, every summer. They were, you know, you talk about pre-season yeah. sales now. Stoke every year, Africa, Russia, America. But they were out there earning the money. So, yeah, he, he played there. He played in South Africa. And then right at the end, he played non-league. Great yeah. Harwood, you know, for a bit of bit of pocket money. So, yeah. Was he, would you think he was a victim of of Harry Catrick's? Does this say, I mean, obviously, I'm... I'm, I'm too young to 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 uh, to watch Terry Catsick teams, but there is this idea that he liked to break up teams. Alan Ball seemed to be a victim of that. Yeah. Obviously, after the sixty nine seventy league, do you think Roy Vernon was a victim of that? Yeah, I think Catrick moved people along. If he thought that they were dipping, mm. if he thought he could get good value for them, he, he would trade players on. Whether that's as you say, Alan Ball, Derek Temple, Roy himself, and and he was he you know two years after he won the league, he started to have knee problems. Probably wasn't quite the same player. And whereas Harry Catrick would maybe turn a blind eye to some of Roy's activities when he was at his best and yeah. at three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon doing the stuff, when he wasn't doing that, maybe Harry decided that, you know, time to move him on. So, absolutely. If you, if you weren't delivering, Harry would sell you. I, I, I read something about that he didn't, he didn't necessarily look like a footballer right. and he certainly didn't have the hands of a footballer. <laughs> yeah, Derek Temple was... I mean, Roy was famous for smoking. You speak to any former player at any of his clubs, two things they'll say. Brilliant footballer and what a smoker. You, I've seen photos. The only time you don't see Roy with a cigarette in his mouth or in his hands is when he's playing. Every other time, senior service fine. <laughs> 
So he was a chain smoker, and as Derek Temple tells a story about how he'd have his little Brillo pad sort of trying to get off the, the sort of nicotine tar stains <laughs> off his hands in the, in the dressing room. Yeah, he didn't look like a footballer. I mean, he was sort of 10 stone, dripping wet, hmm. not an ounce of uh, fat on him, skinny, little. But that was deceptive. He was, yeah. he was, he was tough. He was, it was all muscle what he had, and he was just so quick. That was it. I mean, I'm, I was trying to think what Everton player you might compare him to in our in our sort of memory. Yeah. And there's a bit of Lineker about him, just that pace from a standing yeah. start. But whereas Lineker was a tapping merchant, I was saying before, Roy, he could do it all. He could hit them from 25 yards. He could get in there, hit them from six yards. Couldn't head the ball, mind. That was one thing you never <laughs> saw Roy doing. But uh, apart from that, he could do everything and link up play. Great play. Yeah, well, I was going to say, I mean, he's, he's in good company with someone like Cruyff for the cigarette. He was another one. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned before as well about like not having an agent, obviously, but the picture I see him, he's you know he's there, he's got a nice flashy pair of puma on as well. That yeah. that, that seemed a little bit unusual for the, for the times, just almost maybe five or six years ahead of the time to see a player. I mean, a lot of them obviously wore boots, but yeah. I don't think don't seem think to see, remember that many were branded. No. So was he that kind of play? Did yeah, he, he, he had, himself... I think he had an eye for the um, eye out to make money. Yeah. He, he wasn't daft. He was a grammar school lad. You know, he wasn't your typical footballer, but, you know, he pursued that career. So he was smart, you know, savvy, mm. uh, and he knew how, to, knew how to make a few, few quid on the side, uh, whether it's Puma boot sponsorship or uh, having a go on the dogs or the horses. You know, Roy, Roy was always uh, on the lookout. So you, you, as you mentioned before, do you think the fact that he didn't come back to the club, that he hasn't been a familiar, or certainly wasn't a familiar face around the club, yeah. do you think that went against him? Because you, you are right in what you're saying. A lot of these people stay in the memory of Evertonians because they do, they do hang around the club. I mean, that's not that the right phrase to use. No, in, but, in a nice way. But yeah. you know, the likes of someone like Joe Royal is obviously still a very familiar person at Everton. Derek Temple is still a very familiar person at, at Everton. Players have done a lot less. Than Roy Vane and a very familiar people at Everton yeah. because they just tend to hang, hang around scene, at yeah. Everton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or get jobs with the club, yeah. you know, on the coaching staff, or whatever. No, Roy, he he just he gave up football, worked in a family business back in Blackburn. Probably only came back to Goodison once or twice, mm. and uh, undoubtedly, yeah. And of course, he died in 1993. The, the cigarettes took their toll. Um, so when we start to have the the Hall of Fame dinners, mm. he wasn't there. If he had been there, maybe things would have been different. People would have been able to. You know, get him up there and hear him talking, and that yeah, would have been different. Because you find that, don't you? You find that some Evertonians come, or former Evertonians come back and don't quite understand how they're looked at. I mean, the most recent one I can remember is Pat Van Der Nau, who came back from South Africa himself, yeah. and and didn't understand how how idolised he was by yeah. by a lot of fans. And and we, you know, there's a song obviously that sings the whole of the '85 team, and he's obviously part of. It, so we still sing his name at games, and he had no idea about that, which I, I found quite le- yeah. really strange. Um, so do you think maybe? Yeah, he didn't. He didn't get to hear hear what people thought of him. Yeah. He, he just lived his life fifty odd miles away, sort of relatively quietly, and didn't didn't really get to see the fans. But the fans have spoken to the, the guys who were lucky enough to see him in the sixties. You know, they they say he was he was their hero. You know, Alec Young, yeah, but Roy was his equal. You know, and it's just a shame that he wasn't there at those Hall of Fame nights because he would have been brilliant there. Yeah. You, so you've you've already written the book called the Blue the Blue Dragon. Blue Dragon, yeah. Um, with Doctor David France. That's who, right. Yeah, David. Who, we've been pinging emails backwards and forwards across the Atlantic, and, and uh, he's in good form now. Once so, he uh, gets going, there's oh, no yeah. stopping him. Is <laughs> we 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 know this here. Um, so it's it's. Um, it's getting, hopefully getting published through a Kickstarter That's process. Right. Yeah, so we're looking to publish with Dekubitan, who did my other books, uh, but we're doing a Kickstarter this time. So throughout July, uh, we've got a campaign out there on Kickstarter, and if people want to support the project, they can go to Kickstarter, just search for Blue Dragon or Roy yeah. Vernon, it will pop up. And there's all sorts of ways you can support it and get uh, lots of bonus extras by doing that. So, uh, and the idea is then we'll we'll go to publish in autumn. So I, I had a look before. So if anyone's un- unfamiliar with Kickstarter, the best way to describe it is you're paying for the book before you get the book. So you're helping get the book published, and you will get the book if you That's right. essentially. But if it doesn't get published, you don't get the money taken off yeah. you. Just, <laughs> just so if you want this book. <laughs> Buy it now, and, it, and it's already it'll get published. It's already been written, and you'll get it. So all you're doing is you're just basically pre-buying the book. That's right. It's like it's like a pre-order, yeah. just making sure it gets gets to print that way. Uh, it, it sounds a really fascinating story. As I say, I'm I'm always 
fascinated by these players because listen, we live in a generation that everything is there. You know, the minute Everton get linked with someone, you can just go to YouTube and watch highlights. Of, well, I mean, you call them highlights, and yeah. you can watch the ass run around the same player thirteen <laughs> times, and he looks like a well beater clearly. But you can kind of it's all there now. Um, Whereas these players, there's no, yeah, there's no. So, there's such a, so little in the way of footage of Roy. It's so frustrating. I've been trawling mm. YouTube and the internet, and there's just a few flashes. Like there's one against Wolves in 1960 at Molyneux, and he gets the ball in his own half, turns Billy Wright, goes past two of the Wolves defenders, and then just sends this pass right down the middle to Alec Young, who just hits it first yeah. time, and it was just amazing to watch. You, you just wish there was more footage mm. to, for people to appreciate. Or you can just be like Pele. And just tell everyone that every goal you scored that wasn't on telly was absolutely amazing, <laughs> like he does. He scored a thousand, yeah. honestly. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's amazing. It's uh, Everton. I'm sure that I don't know if it's just Everton, but there seems to be a case. Even like, even like, eighty seven. There's there's a TV strike and eighty five. There's a lot, 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 of, there's a lot. You know, there's missing, a lot, yeah. lot missing. And I know for there's been other projects out there where people have got to go to other football clubs and find if they've got any. So we, to go back to the 60s, it must be even oh, harder. I mean, so believe it. Like, so when we won the league in '63, Roy scored a hat trick on the last day. You know, that was Roy, the man mm. for the big occasion. Is there any footage of it? No. I mean, no. it's just hard to believe these days. The day you win the championship, Roy gets a hat trick, and all you've got is a few photos. It's uh, frustrating, but mm. hopefully the book brings it to life. And I've been lucky that Roy's actually. When he retired, he actually wrote some notes. He was thinking of doing a, an autobiography, and I managed to uh, get hold of those notes that he wrote. So it's fascinating getting his own mm. view about what it was and that, like. And that's really, I mean, it's it's something quite similar. It's funny, really, because when James was writing, um, when he was writing a, a, a book, I'm, I'm trying, Dave Hickson's book, yeah. when he was writing Dave Hickson's book, and he had all the he had it all on audio, and he passed me some of the audio yeah. to try and use to uh, to put something together for him, and just hearing. Dave Hickson uh, in his own, you know, with his own voice and, and coming through with that emotion, saying the things. I mean, you know, it, it puts a completely different slant on all that emotion. So I'm sure if this is the same, having those words yeah. for you must must be a real a it's, real help to push you for. Because then then you're almost using his voice, then aren't you? Exactly, it brings the person to life. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And he was he was a he was a clever guy, a rebel, uh, you know, a brilliant character. I'd have loved to have met him. Yeah. So I mean, while you're here as well, you wrote. Harry Catrick, yep. uh, the, un the untold story for football great. He's another one, isn't he? That time has, hasn't been good to. No. Um, and for one of the reasons was because he, he didn't like the media. Yeah, he was very wary of the media, distrustful. And that was another reason we didn't have much in the yeah. way of television footage. He wasn't keen on the cameras even coming to Goodison. And his, the other problem was, of course, there was a certain Bill Shenfield Five minutes across, down the, the, across road. the road. Although he did end up coming. To he, Belfield. Did, he did live across the way from Belfield, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was, you know, in a way it was partly Harry's own fault, but it is unfortunate because what he achieved, mm. not just winning the league twice yeah. in the Cup, but I mean, people who saw that, that team in 69-70, in fact, the, the last few years of the 60s, they say that's the best ever since yeah. they've seen. Just, you know, the, the Holy Trinity, Joe Royal, Brown. Well, I, I mean, we've just seen the statue, obviously, put at, uh, for the last game of the season, so it's something that is, that I mean, at least that is something that is a, is still very... Familiar to a lot of uh, to a lot of Evertonians, whether they be young or old, a lot of them do know what the Holy Trinity yeah, is. Yeah, or at least if you know, if a kid sees it, they'll say, "Who's that dad?" Yeah. And then the dad or mum will tell them. And I hope that if and when we move down to Bramley Moor, that we we get some statues and oh yeah, and Roy Vernon as a championship winning captain, Brian Labone, but also you know Harry Catrick along with Howard Kendall. They, those should be the statues we have out there. And the other book you've done uh, is T. G. Jones, the <laughs> Prince of Centre Half, another Welshman. Yeah, it's a bit of a theme going on there. In fact, it was doing the T.G. Jones book that got me onto Roy. He was talking to some old Evertonians who were Welsh yeah. as well, who were saying, oh, well, you've done that. Well, how about Roy Vernon? And um, funnily enough, I'd started doing a bit of research and uh, and then I went to the Dixies a couple of years yeah. ago and who was awarded the Everton Giants? It was it was Roy and I just thought, right, that's that's the yeah. signal, I'll do that. But yeah, T.G. Jones, uh, I, know, I know another player who isn't talked about enough these mm. days, but an absolutely fantastic centre-half who was... Uh, Unfortunate because we had the Second World War. We Everton's habit of winning, winning a league title, and then uh, uh, sort of World War happening. It was it's, you, do you do know, wonder about a curse. Sometimes. Do you know when you describe to people and you say to them that Everton are the most unluckiest club ever in history of football ever, and they look at you and they go, yeah. "Why?" and you go, "Well, you know those two World Wars. We were the league title. I mean, why, why?" We haven't been given the title for every year. It's still beyond me. We, we, we should have eight. Years on the road we should have way, eighteen yeah. titles. <laughs> if, it, for, uh, yeah. if it'd been someone else, quite close, they'd have got them. 
Yeah, we're definitely the mo most unluckiest uh, club ever. So, I mean, is there, is there any particular reason why you like looking back at the 60s? Uh, it's just, just a golden era. There's so yeah. much material in there, isn't it? And um, it's just bringing it, because some of it hasn't maybe got the attention it deserves, it's great to dig in there mm. and bring it to the wider attention. And, and Harry and, and now Roy, I think, are two people whose ta you know, tales are worth telling. Brilliant. So, where can we find this Kickstarter then? Just go either Google Kickstarter Roy Vernon or Blue Dragon or go to the Kickstarter website and tap in Blue Dragon or okay. Roy Vernon. You'll find it easily enough and, and please just get involved. And there's loads of packages. There's like the basic package, which is like a book, and then there's, yeah, there's more various, gifts. And there's yeah. even, there's even, and this one, uh, this one caught my eye, there's even a signed Dixie Dean, Dixie Dean. picture. Yeah. yeah. Is it Dixie Dean's signature? Yeah. He's done well there, James, well to get, that. To get yeah. that, to yeah. be honest. So uh, there's lots of options to choose from, from the basic of a book to uh, posters. And, and, and yeah. even if you're not even an Everton fan, there's stuff for Blackburn fans. and Blackburn well, fans, Welsh. yeah. Welsh fans, yeah. So there's, you can get like collections of books, various packages, from, like you say, just like a, an e-book version all the way up to uh, uh, bells and whistles. Just got to check with you. You haven't had the chippy on on Goodison Road. Have you <laughs> trying to trade back? <laughs> No Blue lawyers Dragon. have been in touch yet. Oh, I just wanted to double check that. <laughs> so if you want to get the book and help it come out, get on there. We'll put all the links in the description as well. Big thanks for Rob for coming in to talk about Roy Vane and Harry Catrick and TG Jones. Thanks for watching Toffee TV. We'll see you later.